What's up everyone? Uh, welcome back to my channel. I wanna start off today's video with thanking each and every one of you for the love and support I got from my first video. Uh, because of that video, a company called Desktop sent me their new Bifrost series desk, uh, which you see behind me. Um, rather than doing like a normal like review or build, I decided to take this opportunity to build what I would consider a clean and minimal, but like a decked out version of a Xbox Series X setup. Now that everybody's getting their hands on the new consoles, I kinda wanna show what kind of tech, how I would set it up, um, basically all of the things you need to be successful and compete with PC gamers. So with that said, let's get started with the build. Some of the big pros about this desk is the overall build quality and durability. Its legs are extremely solid and they're powder coated, meaning that they'll be able to withstand quite a bit more. The top is made from a high density board, which is gonna help prevent warpage. And it also has an anti-scratch finish, which is super nice. As a person that hates doing cable management with a passion, these cable management compartments were a huge plus. I'm a huge fan of the backboard just because it makes it stand out compared to some of the other options out there. That said, I love the clean and minimal look of the desk. My only complaint would be that it's a little pricey, but definitely an extremely well-built desk. The big plus of the Series X is that you can now get 4K at 120 frames per second. The drawback is there are currently almost no gaming monitors that have HDMI 2.1 to support that, unlike my LG Nano Cell TV that you might have seen in my last video. So after doing some research, I felt like the best monitor to go with is the 27 inch 1440p LG Ultra Gear, mainly because I can get 120 frames per second at 2K resolution. Even though the stand it comes on is super nice, it took up a ton of desk space, which is why I chose to mount it instead. Out the box, the graphics look okay, which is why once I messed around with the settings and tailored it to how I like it, that's when I finally started to see why the monitor is so highly recommended. Also, after going through a deep rabbit hole on Reddit, I found out in order to get 120 FPS at 1440p, I needed to disable the FreeSync on the monitor and also disable the 4K settings on the Xbox. An added bonus for those of you like me that suck at Call of Duty, you can add crosshairs to the monitor to help your aim. For audio when I'm not using my headset, I once again went with the Logitech MX series speakers. All right, so obviously no gaming setups complete without some RGB lighting. So I'm going to add some lights to the backboard. In order to do that, I'm gonna use the Gobi RGB light strips. The reason I went with Gobi is mainly because they're a fraction of the price of the Philips light strips, and I don't really need them to do anything special. And honestly, these are really good light strips. Plus you can control them with Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and an app on your cell phone. It also comes with its own little remote control. So I'm not gonna do anything fancy with it. I'm just gonna straight up apply it to the background, make sure it doesn't look weird, and then go from there.
All right, so I just got the Govi Flow Pro light bars. I've seen these in a few other videos, but I kind of wanted to test it out myself. The way these are supposed to work is I think you put a camera on top of the monitor and it analyzes the colors on your screen and basically pushes it back with these lights towards your background so it makes it feel more immersive. Probably not the best description, but let's just go ahead and get into this and see what it looks like. So with this kit, you can either mount them to the back of your monitor or use the stands. I don't know how I feel about that. That is a honker. To be honest, these are a really nice alternative to putting RGB strips on the back of the monitor, but they're not super accurate at matching the monitor's visuals, and it's not as immersive as I was hoping. Let me know down in the comments how you would use these, as I feel I'm not taking full advantage of them just yet. So Desktop also sent me all the accessories that they sell separate from the desk. With this desk setup, they give you the shelves, but everything else is separate. They also offer the Nintendo Switch holder, hooks, cup holder, headset holder, and a container. So I'll go through those. The only one I'm not really gonna go into is the Nintendo Switch holder, just because I don't have a Switch and this is an Xbox setup. All right, so what I don't like about these hooks is that they're really small uh, and I was really hoping to be able to fit, fit my controller on here, but I can't. I think these were more designed specifically for like things like keys, but I, I don't really plan on using that for a gaming setup. So I probably won't use these. With audio being a huge element in online gaming, I went with what I've seen a lot of pros use, the Astro A40 gaming headset. Similar to my monitor, I'm able to go down the rabbit hole of Reddit to figure out what settings I need for best quality audio. I'm able to customize my settings using the Astro Command Center software that you can download onto your Xbox. For my controller, I went with the Xbox Elite Controller 2 as I'm able to customize almost everything to the way I like it. For additional storage, I brought in my old IKEA TV unit. All right, so there you have it. That is my new desk setup featuring Desktop's Bifrost Series desk. Um, I'll have links in the bio for everything you see in this video. Um, if there's anything you think I could have done to improve this, just comment down below. Um, with that said, that's literally all I got again. Um, okay, bye.